Everybody, good afternoon. Happy Monday and welcome to the witching forecast. I hope you're all doing really well today. I was just literally um cleaning the house, which is not natural to me, so you know it's not, it's not a natural part of my habitat. Um, but I had to create like a 90s dance playlist to make it so and I was just grooving out to some what was I just grooving out to just now? En vogue. En vogue. I won't sing, but yeah. And if my Kirsty's watching, we seem to do that duet of En Vogue. Brilliant. I've got the I have to say I'm having the best time. What listening to cheesy music and basically clearing house. Hi Miriam. Hi Cara. Mwah. Hello, good afternoon, everyone that's watching. Hi, hi. Um, so this is the witching forecast, not the 90s dance forecast. Um, though we can have a dance up if you like, I'm happy with that. Uh, from today, the 11th, through to, let's check the oldie calendar, I have no idea what day it is, who does these days, uh, to the 17th. So from the 11th of January, 2021, to the 17th of January, still 2021, we hope. Um, and what was I going to say? New moon on... Hello Cobweb on Wednesday. So this is pretty, I was just want to say why we're kind of having a bit of a shake up with the oldie, just music and energies because, what do you think Cobbs? Because um, it's just dark moon at the darkest time of the year and it's hard, like here in UK, probably like you guys too, so I'm just walking all over my laptop. Um, um, if you get a weird email, it's not from me. Um, so it's the darkest time, it's the darkest moon, you know, it's hard, we're in lockdown here in, in the UK, like, it's not an easy one. So I think just shaking up the energy, being kind to yourself, and making things a little bit more fun and light where we can is pretty good. And even if, like this morning, I felt pretty bleh, um, I didn't feel like dancing around or being doing anything, but it was like, no, you've got to do it you know, do it. And then as soon as you start shifting the energy, things start start shifting a bit. Cobby, your fans are here, your friends are here. Miriam says hello. <laughs> Hi there. And um, what would a witching forecast be without Cobb backside? That, that is what I would say. So, hi there, Amanda. Hi there, everybody. Hope you're having a good Monday. And yes, yeah, so we have the new moon on Wednesday, on Woden's Day. And that will be new moon in Capricorn. So what a time to make some fresh clear decisions for the year. I don't find that um, a New Year's is particularly when we kind of have to set our intentions, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. I think that the first new moon of the year is when we have done that clearing more, we've done that, that shifting and we're ready to set some powerful intentions. And I've got, I talk about it quite a bit, I've got the Nordic, no, the Runic Animist Calendar. It's very, very awesome. I would definitely, um, your auntie says hello, Cobby. <laughs> and everyone says hello, Cobby. <laughs> He's here. He's soaking all up, just soaking all in. Um, but yeah, the Runic Animist Calendar, and that's by Dr. Runic Rasmussen. I'm really bad with names, but yeah. Um, and it says that the first new moon, the energy or the rune of the first new moon of the year um, sets the tone for the year. And so uh, it's going to be a very interesting one. I think it's Lagu's this year. Uh, so it's emotional and uh, yeah. And do check out um, Magin Rose if you want to learn about runes. I'm doing an amazing course with her and uh, her half space um, area is really great to learn about runes. So yeah, I mean just saying basically the new moon is going to be a new energy, setting the intentions for the year. And we've had that time in between time from Yule to now where we've been clearing out and it has been that waning moon feeling. Um, and now, just if you are feeling a bit low today, it is dark out there, it's dark, moon, you know, there's not just you, there's stuff going on, so just allow that to, allow that to be and do what you can to, to move yourself forward. Hi there Julie, hi there Anna, Mwah. lots and lots of love, I should make it cobby cam, shouldn't I? Um, but yeah, okay, let's get rocking and rolling with what we're here for, um, which is drinking tea and getting the tarot cards out. So. Let's have a look at what, so it's going to be an interesting one, I think it's quite a busy astrological week, so let's see what the, um, got the Druid Craft Tarot here, um, a well-loved, <laughs> well-used Druid Craft Tarot, so let's see what the, oh, <laughs> what the cobby, uh, what the um, card for the week is for everybody, so let's focus in on this week for us. What is the focus for everybody this week? Oh, well, that's nice. <laughs> it's lovely. The Ten of Pentacles. So, 
we've got the sun and the moon in Capricorn, which is the deep earth, the deep earth sign. And the ten of pentacles is, it is earth, it is the discs, it's the pentacles, it's the land, it's our health, it's our physicality. And the ten is really the the, the summit of a journey, the gathering of things. And it almost feels a bit like, well, yeah, we can't be with everybody. We can't be with family. We can't have that environment in a, in a very physical way. But in a personal way, we can really work on our own inner wealth, our own inner abundance, our own grounded energy. So the Ten of Pentacles is this absolute, you know, ultimate pinnacle of, of achievement in a physical realm. Okay, so it's, it's, you know, you've got the house, you've got the family, you've got the dog, you've got the kids, you've got all the things. The wisdom that goes with that as well. But here we can have that within ourselves. What is it we've accumulated? What is it that we've gathered and built? What is our knowledge? What is our wisdom? What is our power? It's a great time to kind of stir that cauldron, to look at the treasure chest of what is within you, what is around you. The small, simple things, you know, if you have a house, if you have a dog or a cat <laughs> if you have family or friends that you can talk to what is a small grounding thing no matter how small or no matter how big you know you have an amazing big house and everything's going well whatever it is it is really being in that treasure trove with, within your own life and taking from that as well and upon another card when i say taking from it i'm saying working from it working from that inner gold working from that inner treasure um it's a great week as well for getting things sorted on the practical level. I kind of almost feel like she's doing the cleaning to a 90s playlist. There's going, oh God, what are they all doing? Getting the taxes done, getting everything sorted, putting all the you know dots on the I's and crossing the T's, getting things in order in the physical realm. It's also going to help move forwards in the mental and emotional realms. So I pulled another card and we've got the nine of wands. So this is interesting because I feel this is what are we holding on to? What are we battling to keep going when maybe, maybe, and this is the big uh, word of the Tiffany who gave me a very good reading last night about holding on and letting go. I'm the queen of holding on, by the way, of everything. Um, what is, and I'm seeing this person here who's like, no, I'm right. I'm right. That's the most important thing. I'm in my corner and I'm right. Yeah, he looks very angry, very stressed, very alone and kind of a little bit wounded. So what part of us is trying to defend something, to kind of hold on to something, which is maybe isolating us from others, or maybe, um, you know, a little bit egomaniac, <laughs> or like just afraid, like what, what part of us are we afraid to let go of, you know? <laughs> are we like Donald Trump, afraid to leave the White House? Are we afraid to let go of something? Are we afraid to say, actually, I don't know the answer to that question. Have we held on to something emotionally and it's kind of become our safety line so it's not saying you're not meant maybe you're not wrong maybe you're actually defending something you do need to defend but i would just say that that kind of the small everyday beauties are going to get you so much further than kind of this fierce um, need to fight for something and i think it's what comes up as an anger as a fear as a concern to defend this week could be really worth looking at especially as energy changes um, so yeah, I feel like beautiful energy and I think the Ten of Pentacles is really great for uh, the new moon in uh, Capricorn. So it's a great, you know, in a very down to earth way, it's a great week for money. It's a great week for, for, for being able to manifest, to be able to kind of get house and home sorted and roots put down. I did also pull this one out as well. What a shame, how terrible, like what, what a disaster I pulled that one out. And that's ultimate Capricorn card. So Kanunos is... Um, Oh, sorry. Um, I'm saying sorry to the cat, not, not to you guys. I'm just, <laughs> I'll say sorry to you guys as well if you want. Um, but Kalinos is, um, you know, traditionally the devil card, uh, traditionally the card of uh, shadow and um, maybe uh, addictions or issues. And in this deck, I do feel that, of course, there's something there. But it's also about being really aware of the good side of Capricorn as well and the good side of physicality and sensuality and enjoying life. So, Stuff from the shadows might be coming out this week as this dark moon um, comes up and that make us make, maybe makes us feel a bit um, on the edge, a bit, you know, a bit um, maybe wounded or insecure because our shadows are coming up. But when we look at them, we actually are then able to enjoy life more, to enjoy the pleasures of life without being afraid of things. So it's a very strong week. I, I think things will come up. 
and uh, but I think as a whole there's a lot of good energy there's a lot of powerful and strong and secure I like how earthy the cards are as well I think that's what we need at this time to be grounded to be here to be present and connected so uh, yeah I think that's quite nice cards for the week actually that's just general of course and now and now for my next trick I'm going to do a um, paranormal card for the week and then we're going to go through from our Capricorns to our through the whole through the whole wheel of the year and before I do just to say if you do know your top three the big three um sun moon and rising that would be ace and if you don't know you can find it out really easily on places like a lab and astro.com if you know your time of birth and your place of birth you can put all them in and find out your sun sign your moon sign your rising sign if you don't know um what time you were born that's okay you can still find out your sun and moon sign so there we go. Right. Okay. Power animal card for the week is. Oh, I mean, I know I'm gonna love every one of these, but look, looky, looky, look. I love this. It's so beautiful. The humpback whale. It's a singer. Sing healing songs for the world. Um, maybe ninety songs, perhaps. I'm joking. Your inner navigation always guides you. Nothing can stop you or keep you from your goal align with your purpose and power in your soul so i feel like this really strongly goes with the ten of pentacles that you can be really strong and in your alignment in your strength in your power and your purpose and then you can use a beautiful power the healing power of um, the humpback whale and to sing and to i mean this isn't you know people get afraid of singing we've had this conversation quite a bit of the last few days people are afraid of singing it's not about being Beyonce or, um, you know, Kate Bush <laughs> um, or whoever else. Uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's about expressing something deep within you that will resonate and will vibrate and give out healing energy to yourself and to others as well. So um, nothing can stop you or keep you from your goals. If you're feeling a bit out of sorts, out of whack. Uh, connecting with the energy of the humpback whale they're just so lovely anyway um and saying nothing can stop you or keep you from your goal to align with your purpose and the power in your soul yes beautiful so strong i think really the ten of pentacles and that just seems to go so well together so nicely miriam says good cards of the week they make sense to me i'm glad they do i'm glad they make sense to you because you know, everyone will relate to things, of course, differently from their personal perspective, from what's going on with them, and also different star signs will kind of react to things differently as well. So let's have a look at what cards we're going to use next. Okay. Uh, um, I just love them so much. I'm going to use the witch, Everyday Witch again. I just love them. So they're coming up. Well, the Thoth, no, the Thoth deck wants to come up as well. We'll see. The Thoth deck is like, how about me? I am the epic deck. Why are you not using me? Okay, so we'll go with the Thoth and then we might... We'll see what happens. Okay, Capricorn. Team Capricorn. So, happy birthday to you lovely Capricorns. Um, let's have a look and see what is coming up for you guys for our lovely Cappy friends this week. And it is earthy. We've got so earthy, earthy, my earth face. So we have the Ten of Pentacles for the card of the week. Then we've got the Prince of Discs, who's the Prince of Pentacles for the, you know, for the... Um, the Capricorns and this is very Taurian though so you can see the bull the bull makes it more Taurian than Capricorn uh, but I love it this is it is very much being here in and also this is riches this is abundance this is building your strength this is getting things done but also um, having your worldly wealth around you but what I would say is what is it you're carrying with you? Are you carrying your riches and your treasure, the things that make you happy? Or I'm kind of having that vision of, you know, in Labyrinth when you've got the junk, the junk lady and she's got all that just stuff piled up on her back. And I kind of feel like that stuff there on this kind of, are you taking treasure or are you taking, um, you know, stuff you don't need anymore with you? It's a great week to check in Capricorns, what you're carrying with you. What is going to be your focus? It's your new moon this week. Um, so what is going to be your focus? for the year ahead do you want to clear out some of those old dusty musty issues and things you've been taking with you stories about yourself stories about your life do you want to bring them with you if they're good if they're gold carry them but if they're making you feel more like that character from labyrinth you know with all the junk and the teddy bears and the stuff on her back that can't let anything go then 
and it could be the time to just have a reassess of what you're carrying because it looks like quite a heavy burden and I think as a whole he's strong enough he can take it and this is riches it's strength it's earthly goodies but just make sure that you are focusing on the things that are going to nurture you make you happy and carve your positive future forward but a good week for money abundance for getting things done for feeling rich for feeling positive for feeling strong in your purpose so yeah strong strong uh, secure card and hi dominic thank you and and uh, best wishes to you as well so let's move on to our lovely mm -hmm, aquarians so we go from capricorn to aquarius and let's see what is coming up for team aquarius okay right okay exhaustion we've got the same earthy feeling we are so earthy it is just ridiculous so again um we are at the end like we're going to go to your sign next so maybe your energy levels on i always find this before my birthday like maybe a few weeks before i just feel really exhausted and maybe it could be the same with you that you feel a bit like the, the year is wearing a bit seven of pentacles is really interesting um it's saturn in taurus this is the astrology of it and saturn is the big taskmaster the big lesson learner but really at the end of the day gives out the best gifts <laughs> so if you do the work so for aquarius this is seeing in the dark i always think it's a bit of an owl like as like a beak and two eyes and i always kind of think seeing in the dark is quite important but it's all dark it's, it's night time it's exhausted it says failure on there i don't read the words so much on these cards because i find they're too damning and seven of pentacles isn't a bad is not a bad card actually and in a lot of decks it's coming it's like having riches to spare it's like having done the work but um in this deck it's kind of saying still we're looking at that what is your bit like capricorn really see through the obvious see through the day-to-day -day routine and see what is draining you what is not good for you what you want to remove from your life so that you can really go into i put another one for you guys go into your solar month with party hat on you know with pure bright joy um so i feel like we're going to that deep dark night of the soul the big tea, tea time of the soul where things may feel a little bit exhausting and you may be really reassessing what it is you're doing but there's great wisdom here in the dark you can see things you can pick things up you can know things about what you have who's around you what you're doing so trusting your knowing and trusting your path but don't be afraid to take some um cut some of the burden out to take out some of the trash as it were and allow yourself to um energy wise recoup re recharge because things are going to really rev up soon for you guys i think as well and if with a card failure i think with the word failure it could be quite interesting because i don't really believe in failures i think that everything that we've done maybe it's time to go through it and say what well, hasn't worked and what do we learn and what do we want to remove from our life okay moving on to pisces our lovely fishies Team Pisces, what is your card for, oh look, it couldn't be more Piscean if it tried. So here we have the Princess of Cups. We've got the Fishes of Pisces going round there. Um, and you've got this turtle and a shell and all this kind of beautiful oceanic emotional energy. So the Princess of Cups is this beautiful sweet energy of, of love, of a poem you know like the it's when something just sweeps you away emotionally and you kind of almost feel like you've heard it for the first time or you felt something new and beautiful or maybe it's even like a really nostalgic feeling of when you were young there's just a sense of this being swept away by something that's really innocent and beautiful and kind of really takes your soul and i always think of this with the princess of cups so it's love but in that kind of fresh oh my gosh just falling for someone with a bit of innocence it's that um, feeling of creativity of movement of the heart of joy of laughter of dance there is a sense of everything about emotions which is fresh and new and moving on a negative side it can be a bit naive because it's the same thing we're talking about that feeling of um you know the freshness but um i feel that as a whole how beautiful and refreshing is it when you can be moved when you can flow with your emotions when you don't get stuck um when you're able to take new channels of energy um so this is beautiful and i feel like this is about your heart and allowing yourself to create to play to write to sing to be joyful to love to see the beauty in things at the moment and it's a beautiful card and it will attract more beautiful things for you as well so that's for our lovely pisces and let's see who else we've got coming in so we have next our aries buddies well <laughs> 
I am my Aries buddy and I have my Aries buddies out there as well. Team Aries, let's see what is the card, what is the energy for the week for you guys. We are so Capricorn this week, Aries. We are like rocking our Capricorn horned headdress, which I'm very much down with a Capricorn horned headdress. That looks fabulous. We've got a wand, we've got a massive pineapple, we've got a what? <laughs> Why are we sitting on a massive pineapple? Well, Pineapple, pineal gland, pineapple is like, there's so many things about pineapples that are actually pretty esoteric and also um, uh, can be about really um, being able to withstand long periods without maybe the things that we want. So droughts uh, or kind of be able to sustain ourselves over long distances. Um, so that's something we can learn from Capricorns. Um, but this is the queen, the queen of pentacles, the queen of earth. She's got a shield over her heart. This is the week to get mean, not get mean, but get on it, get to be like the queen bee, get to um, organize your stuff, get to rule your own empire. Look at how far you've come as well. Look back a little bit at this dark, dark moon before we go into new moon Capricorn and really see what you've learned, what you've done, where you've come, like really see how much you've survived without going up into some songs about being a survivor, but you know, really see how much you've survived and then turn your cheek towards the future to see where you are right now, Queenie. Look at you, you know, you've got your, you know, you've got your everything around, you've got your goat, <laughs> everyone loves a goat, um, and you've got your sense of strength, power, what you've, the riches you've earned from all of this journey, and you're moving into this new energy, this new year, quite strong, not easily fooled, pretty savvy, but with so much love, um, fertility, um, beauty, creativity, and also you know how to move forwards. So you are the queen of your realm. So time to own it this week, Aries. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and hi there, Debbie. It's all right, I didn't realize it was Monday. That's fine. We're all a bit confused right now. Who knows what day it is? Um, that's absolutely fine, lovely. Um, welcome. You haven't missed your star sign yet. So, Moving on to Taurus, Team Taurus, the Tauri. I think that's what you could call Taurians as a plural, the Tauri. Let's have a look and see what's coming up for you guys this week. Okay. The princess. Oh, lovely. So um, the pineapples are back. They are back. Just to say, they appear quite a lot in this deck. It's all about the pineapples. Um, maybe it's a week we drink pina colada. It's an idea. I'm, I'm quite open to that. Anyway, um, but you see other things about the desert, that, that camels, like, they can withstand long days in the heat, they can serve water. This is a spiritual metaphor, of course, as well as kind of a physical thing. They're the crystals and everything. So the priestess is in this web of reality. She's weaving the web. She has um, the conscious mind, the unconscious mind, and she sits in the middle. She has her arrows, a bows and arrow there. She has, which usually in most decks comes up as a book, but here she has like the goddess of the moon, like Artemis or Diane, because she's linked to the moon, um, the kind of the lunar um, bow and arrow there. And she is the lunar energy. She's make your new moon wishes, Taurus. Make your new moon wishes. You've got the goddess of the moon. You've got the intuition. This may not be a week where you kind of achieve all the things, but it is going to be a week where you set yourself up for absolute beauty, love, and all the good things for the year ahead. So maybe just take some time to tune in. However you work spiritually, however you work emotionally, this is a time to really tune into that and to do something to celebrate this new moon. Ooh, sorry, something's coming alive on my computer. Um, celebrate this new moon, celebrate this energy, um, celebrate your intuition, follow, really go deep, like really feel, maybe meditate, do things which are going to really inspire you. It's a really powerful week. The priestess is one of my favourite cards. She is the the kind of the witches, the psychics, the goddess lovers, kind of uh, esoteric poster girl. She is the dark mother, the mother that doesn't come through and give you that hug maybe, but is there for you in those spiritual times when you need her. So beautiful energy, trust your intuition, go deep, don't take things at face value. And with the priestess as well, I sometimes think it's sometimes think it is good to listen rather than speak. We often feel we have to react or do something or say something, and the priestess goes, "Silence, listen, and you'll gather more than you need to know at that time." Okay, so on to Gemini's team gems. Hi there, good afternoon, you guys. So let's see what is coming up for our lovely Gemini's this week. 
um oh you've got your basically you've got your card you've got your card this is you the gemini card in the major arcana is the lovers and that's because you've got the twins you know the two sides of the self the two sides of the masculine and feminine the polarities there um and of course this is passion this is love this is a great time for for romance for of course, you know, the lover's card is one of those cards. It's about passion. It's about connection. It's often more about people you, you know, it's not often like new, like the person who's meeting someone. It's more like something more established, a friendship, a connection, a relationship that gets to that deeper level. Because it's more about commitment and taking that step forwards um, to acknowledge the other, basically. You've got Cupid there. So there can be a sense of new connection there. There can be that. But I often think with the lover's card, that's more strong than some other um, relationship cards. Where like the Ace of Cups, Two of Cups is kind of beautiful. It's new. It's fun. This is more like, OK, we're at the church. <laughs> We've got the, the, the priest, kind of the wizard there, kind of doing the ritual. And uh, for the eagle eyes of you guys, we have um, Eve in one corner and Lilith in the other. So you have the two wives of adam um in the corners of the, which, we, which we can obviously go into in more tarot times but uh there's so much there there's so much there um you've got the, the beasts the opposites being entwined so i'll come back to what it means for you guys i can go off on symbolism with these forever but um what this means what this is is it is about connection it is about um the people that you meet people around you people you connect with which totally are important to you you know that there can be can be about commitment can be about taking a step forward in a relationship it can also be a business transaction connection as well you know it can also be that sounds really cold but you know you could meet someone who is going to be an improvement of your life and you make a deal contractually you know but um often it's love we like love more than that that's much more fun but i think it's a strong week for kind of setting yourself up okay gemini's whether you're single or in a relationship set up the intentions for your love life for 2021 by the new moon Set your intentions for yourself, how you want to feel, how you want to be, what's important to you, what do you want to leave behind, where do you want to go? And that's a really great energy to move forward with um, over this time. So, two Geminis saying lovely, yay, good, I'm glad, happy Geminis, that's what we like. Okay, moving forward to Cancerians. Again, Cancer Moon, Cancer Rising, as well as Cancer Suns coming up here. So let's have a look for you guys and look at Cancerian card for the week. Ooh. Do, 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 do. the aeon are things as they seem are we going into a new aeon a new era yes we are <laughs> obviously we are uh we really are and as a cancerian um you're gonna feel it all you're gonna feel every shift every every energetic change every flow so um yeah don't let that kind of overwhelm you maybe do the things you need to do to kind of keep yourself in your good bubble like your good safe space but be aware that this is epic, this is massive. What's changing now, what's being born now for you, for you, in the microcosm, macrocosm, so microcosm for Cancerians, for your life this week, plant the seeds for the future, get yourself in the right headspace, vision board it up, plan where you wanna be, see the big changes, wish for them, make them so. Like, this is making sure that you're on the right path to transforming what you want to transform. Macrocosm, like this is the global transformation that's going on, the wake up call, the shift in energy, all of that kind of thing and you'll feel every wibble wobble of it so just make sure that you're not getting buffeted by everything maybe less social media less you know just protect yourself from the energetic shizer that's going around but make sure you make the most of this shift for you because things are changing for you um so yay okay let's have a look now moving on to our lovely leos um see what's coming up for team leo this week <laughs> oh it's, that's nice it's a nice card uh three of wands is virtual it is the sun in aries so aries and leo is good friends that's a good vibe the good connection and aries brings new starts new energy it brings optimism so it goes maybe i could do this maybe i could do that and that excitement of well i can i mean i know right now there's so many restrictions but it doesn't mean you can't get excited and envision and dream and plan for the things that you can do and that you want to do and that make you happy. This could be a creative project. This could be a holiday when you can go on one. This can be um, revamping your life in some way. There's going to be not just a dreaming of it this week. There's going to be signs and um, proof and opportunities to make it begin, to make it happen. I feel the new moon will make you feel more optimistic than you felt for a while. And it will shake up some energy, move things forward and allow you to 
see this hard work that you've done, like where it can lead you. So I feel it's a really beautiful, bright and optimistic energy. And even with the colours, you've got the orange and the yellow, your sacral chakra, which is your kind of inner wisdom, your inner knowing, your kind of inner seat there. And your yellow is your solar plexus, your personal power. So your inner knowing and your personal power are kind of in a really good place this week. So yeah, nice for Leos. Moving on to our lovely Virgos. Team Virgo, let's see what's coming up for you guys this week. Science, <laughs> not silence, but science, <laughs> um, which would work for Virgos quite well. It's time to use that um, clever brain of yours to uh, <laughs> to work out logically. I'm almost singing like the Pink Panther soundtrack in my head. <laughs> you know, the, you know, you know, they make the blueprints, the plans of what they're going to do. This feels like a Pink Panther blueprint map moment. And if you're too young for the Pink Panther, it's just meaning just make those plans <laughs> in a really fun way. Take on that role of the kind of the detective, the the, the mad scientist, the the person that's going to make breakthroughs because you are. And this is a really fun week to make those plans to move you forward to better times. And I think this kind of works for you guys because it's it's, it's logical. It's it's happening. It's real. It's massive shifts. It could be really esoteric. It could esoteric. It could be really emotional. But you're moving forwards in such like mm -hmm, well, if I do this and then do that, then this will happen. <laughs> kind of way. So you can really move your personal life and your plans to a new level this week. And you can maybe get help from others. I think that the signs kind of represents equal, you know, people putting their ten pence in getting advice, you know, but I feel like you can access some great information, some communication, some logic, some planning and move forward really far in the direction that you wish to go in. So you've got the, going to the, the rose in the centre of the cross. This is a really powerful um, manifesting week for you as well. But you're doing it in a really awesome and logical way. So great. That's nice. OK. And um, just checking anyone's comments. I think I've seen them all. That's good. So now we're moving on to Libra. My lovely Librans. Let's see what's coming up for you this week, lovely Librans. I've got the Pink Panda soundtrack stuck in my head now. <laughs> okay, nice. And should suit you guys because it's a Venusian energy. You've got um, the... the, the um, Sorry, my brain's melting <laughs> the nine of pentacles there which is beautiful like we're in this absolute place of manifesting of abundance of of love it, and, and because it, you know it's an earth card so i've got the green slight tinge of pink as well and it's very heart chakra based it's very much um not only manifesting stuff that makes us feel more secure but makes our heart happy you can be in a really good place this week for um um getting what you want basically whether it be in love or in work in money or in kind of manifesting a possession uh, but it would it's not one that you go okay cool I've got that it's more like this is mine I feel really happy and I feel really proud your home can make you feel proud your your friendship group and your you know what you what you have in your life it could be just really kind of reevaluating what you have in your life and what makes you happy what fills you with joy but it's a good week it's very healthy it's very um uh, expansive I feel like it's expansive for the heart it's expansive for your kind of financial or um, sort of material gain it feels like the bigger picture it feels secure and stable because it's in Capricorn so Capricorn is all about that bigger it's not about cheap tricks this is about if you bought something this week uh, Libras you'd buy quality you know you wouldn't buy a cheap old majiggy that breaks next week you'd buy that you know antique or that very branded thing that you know is going to be very good you know and, and last a long time i'm not saying go buy expensive things but if you were you probably would <laughs> and but you know you could be really pr proud of where you are proud of your house proud of your home proud of your car give it a good old clean honestly it's that sense of just having beautiful things that make you feel happy and make you feel strong and help you move forward in a really beautiful and strong way i think it will fill your heart you know, we live in a physical world. We're told that being, you know, being a consumerist isn't great, but having things like maybe it could be a ritual thing, an instrument. Uh, what do you love? What's around you? Just make the most of it. Enjoy it. Clean it up. Get it out. Enjoy that feeling. I think you'll magnetise more good things towards you, basically. Righty boo. Amanda says it sounds good to her. Yeah, so far, touch wood, it, it, all, it all feels quite nice. Um, and then moving towards Scorpio, our lovely Scorpions. Dun dun dun. Again, same as Pisces. You've the water signs. I mean, 
Apart from Cancer, Pisces and Scorpio have both got lovely, beautiful, bright. This is not a time, Scorpio, to be holding on to some really dark stuff. <laughs> it's easy to right now, I know, but um, it's actually time to surf that wave of new energy, of bright, of love, of romance. It doesn't have to be with somebody else. This could be, you know, just having romance in your life in some way, um, which could be um, through poetry, through art, through um, the way you choose to live, through ritual. You know, this is a beautiful feeling of love, self-love, sharing love. I think there's a new energy around you guys. And I think it's beautiful. And there seems to be something of a new perspective and a brightness which is coming in for you as this new moon comes about. So it's a gorgeous loving and allow yourself to be vulnerable in the right places, obviously. You know, you don't want to <laughs> tell everybody how you feel, but find those places where you can be vulnerable and let it let it out. I know that Scorpios can be quite, quite rightly so, quite defensive and secretive, but this is a time to find that right place just to express who you are. Beautiful, beautiful energy there. Alrighty, so moving on to our um, lovely Sagittarians, Team Fire. Let's see what's going on, what's coming up for our Sagittarians this week. Um, oh yeah, it's all about the fire. You, you know, so this is um, very, well it's Leo. So again, Aries, Leo and Sagi or fire signs, they all get on energetically. It's all kind of pretty cool. And so your Sagis have uh, Mars in Leo this week. There is a drive. There is a pride. I've got Mars in Leo. I, I can tell you, it's, there's a pride. <laughs> there's a pride. And uh, there's a sense of, no, this is me. And this is who I am. And I am this person. And the valour and the protecting and the one that's going to do the right thing. It's very passionate. So I think there could be some breakthroughs, some Sagittarians this week in a good way. It's quite sexy. It's quite um, drive, a drive this week so there's no kind of sitting there going oh, I don't know if I could I don't know it's like no I'm gonna do it I'm gonna stand up for myself I'm gonna defend this defend my honor um do show the world who I am um and it could be a bit of a battle it might not be the easiest one but because of the energy of this card even if it's a struggle you guys have it this energy of being able to get through if you've got a zillion deadlines if you've got a zillion things to do you can breeze it by just turning on that saggy charm you know um just go into that you know we all get overwhelmed but just turn on that wait a minute i'm a freaking fire sign i can burn through this just go into that energy of being on you know knowing you are a superstar knowing you can do it if it's about breakthrough in relationships just say it say who you are show the world show the world who you are um it's quite flirty in that way as well in a kind of a good old-fashioned way so that's nice saggies you got it you're gonna make a breakthrough this week it's gonna be epic Cobby's on the computer you keep hearing noises because Cobby keeps standing on the computer um okay right cobwebs back let's have a look and see as we go oh that is everybody <laughs> Just done the whole lot and I didn't even realise it. Um, yep, done everybody. That's everyone's cards done for the week. <laughs> I was getting so into that, I forgot that we'd actually got to the end of the star sign. Unless we go to that 13th sign that I'm, I'm not going to do. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's why Cobby Campy said, Mummy, we're finished now. So, yeah, what? that was pretty all right. I don't know what you guys thought about that, but that was pretty nice. I think we all did okay on that one. And I think there is help and support and energy shifting, which will hopefully kind of get us through. I remember the cards for the week at the beginning were Ten of Pentacles. So really, a lot of it is about kind of being present. We are in the middle of that earthy winter earth, like the deep winter earth. So Capricorn is winter earth. Um, and you've got um, Taurus is spring earth. And then you've got Virgo, which is kind of harvest earth. We are in winter earth everything is deep everything is underground it's not all about kind of jazz hands it's about doing that deep inner work making sure you have everything that you need making sure that your roots are healthy um so it's that kind of depth of knowing that what you have on a ground level on a strong um under you know under world level is is happy so yeah i think it's going deep this week but there are riches there are absolute riches there so thank you guys so much um have a lovely week and uh, take care of yourselves happy new moon for wednesday and i'll see you guys all really soon take care